Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Brotherly Love in the District. Tristan here along with Jacob. And Jacob, want to go ahead and tell them what we're getting into? Yeah, so we're just coming off a very great Super Bowl Sunday. So I want to talk about that. And today we're going to be talking about Washington's defense and we're talking about how well we think they did and where they need to improve. Going on to hockey, um, the trade the trade deadline nears. And so we're going to be discussing our recent team's play and what we think should happen and what our needs are. And then finally, at the MLB, um, the, the employee that was selling Tyler Skaggs along with some other players' drugs is facing up to 20 years or at minimum 20 years. And also, we'll be talking about some free agency and talking about the Players Association meeting. So, let's get right into it. Indeed. So, let's start out just with the Super Bowl. And overall, it was a good game. I'm happy. It was Matthew. a very good game. I'm happy Matthew Stafford won. Refereeing was a little bit questionable. Just a little. With uh, there was that missed, the missed pass interference on Jalen Ramsey. Uh, I can't even. Oh, you mean the one where uh Jamar Chase got that one handed and like still got up a little bit? I'm talking about the one where it was the obvious face mask. Oh yeah. Oh, it was acted on Jalen Ramsey, not yes. Jalen Ramsey. Uh, yeah, the face mask on Jalen Ramsey, the phantom pi on Cooper Cup late in the game and he up by the linebacker which I mean yeah, Aaron Donald lined up off sides in the very last offensive play for the Bengals I think they could have called it maybe a holding I still don't think there was enough there definitely wasn't enough to be a PI I don't holding. think there was enough for it to be a penalty I mean like the whole I, game I don't they think so weren't either, calling but... ticky tack plays and then all of a sudden in the most crucial of times they start calling Tiki tack plays that literally decided the game. Yeah. And I think, uh, I also don't think that, I think maybe they could have got him for holding, but nothing more than that. Not PI. But for me, that like they could have, but I think it would have still been seen yeah. as a tiki tacky stretch. Agreed. Uh, and then, yeah, Aaron Donald lining up offsides, which is huge because he's the one who got into the backfield and made that play to end the game. Yeah, and what I think it's impressive about the Bengals, they own, they probably should have won that game despite their offensive line. And I think I saw the stat during the game that Joe Burrow either tied or broke the record for most times sacked in tied a single Super Bowl with seven. Yeah, that that's bad. And and the the defensive line wasn't even getting home until the second quarter, at least. I know they like and Aaron Donald about, was unheard of until about the second half. Yeah, and I'll say one thing about the Bengals, their defense, I'm talking about their defensive line and their linebackers were actually playing a very good game. I just think their secondary. Yeah, the secondary sucks. And Eli Apple, it seems like the league has come together to collectively roast him. (laughs) Did you see did you see what he said? Uh he made a statement about Yeah, I saw that today. I'm trying to I'm gonna try to find it real quick. That's talking about how he's like gonna get better and stuff like that let's see uh i can't find it but where did it go but yeah i mean overall i'm just happy that matthew stafford finally won a ring he deserved it yeah at the end of the day i I was good at the other team winning i think it would have been cool to see the plucky underdog win but at the end of the day i don't yeah i was good with either team winning which is the first time I've been able to say that in a few Super Bowls. Um, okay, well, that is not what I'm looking for. Let's see if this – I think this is – yeah, this is it. All right, so Eli Apple says, Y'all reawoke a fire in me that will only make me stronger, and I'm beyond excited to unleash that demon again to exponential levels on any opponent that lines up across from me next season. Eli, beyond burnt apple coming to a stadium <laughs> near you next season. Yeah, I mean, there is nothing like he should. I think what really killed the uh, what killed the Bengals is the fact that who's their their number? Oh, Chidabe Awuzie went down. So then Eli Apple was lining up on Cooper Cup, which yeah, and the thing about, and the thing about their secondary is like. Like, it was a winnable game. Matthew Stafford, for the longest time, wasn't playing that great at all. Odell Beckham went down with a torn ACL, and he 
was struggling to find Cooper Cup until like the fourth quarter. So yeah, it was a very winnable game. And if the Bengals just had a better offensive line and just maybe one or two more sec pieces in the secondary, they very well could have won. The Bengals do have a good future. I mean, they that have is a very good that's... future. Yeah, and I've seen people saying that uh, they aren't that they aren't going to be able to. Ha- they're not going to make the playoffs next season, which I think is going to be. I I disagree with that. I, I think this is more than like a cylinder, Cinderella run, like we saw the Habs last year in the NHL playoffs. I think they're genuinely a good team, and if they were able to do all this despite their questionable secondary and terrible offensive line, imagine what they can do with just a few more pieces added to those areas. So, uh. I'm trying to see what I'm trying to find how much because I think Cooper Cup did most of his work in that last drive in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he was he did most of it in the in the last quarter. He, he ended the season with eight reception or ended the game with eight receptions, 92 yards, and two touchdowns. Yeah, but, and he did get the Super Bowl MVP. Uh with the Rams down four in the two-minute warning, Cup had three receptions for 38 yards in the fourth quarter, bringing the his current total. So he had, in that last drive, he had four receptions and 39 yards and a touchdown and a seven-yard rush for a first down. So he got half of his receptions in that single drive. In the third quarter, he only had one reception. Uh, I believe I don't think he did anything in the first quarter. Cup only had one reception in the first quarter. So he had one in the first, two in the second, one in the third, and then four in that last track in the fourth quarter. Uh actually might not have been on that last drive, but yeah, the fourth quarter was really where he came out. But yeah, I don't I don't think Matthew Stafford play all that great. I really did. As much as I would have liked to see him win MVP, he didn't deserve it by any yeah, it, imagination. It was down to either Aaron Donald or Cooper Cup. There was nobody else it could have been. I don't think it should have been. I don't think it should have been Aaron Donald either because it, when they look at MVP, I feel like they only really look at the stats. And based on the stats, Aaron Donald didn't do much. He only had, I believe, three quarterback pressures, two sacks, and one like one rush, but he didn't do anything. Uh, didn't do anything too much i thought for sure he would be wrecking havoc all night well he did in the he did in the most like critical he did in the critical moments when he needed to and that's really all that matters yeah i mean overall they won and that's really all he cares about i'm sure yeah he got his ring something interesting i heard and i want to hear your take on it is uh right after the game they were talking about aaron donald possibly retiring I don't think he should. I don't think that'll happen. I don't think either. he will. Yeah, um, I think it. Like, I think he's playing with the idea because it would be nice. But I think he feels that they are a good enough team to make a few more runs at most. They got to do it soon, like because they don't have another first round pick until twenty twenty four. Uh, and I mean, this team is too good to be able to just start re signing players once. Yeah, I think the shelf life for this team is maximum two or three years. The uh, Odell, I think, is the only big name free agent for the Rams this season. And he said he's willing to take a pay cut to stay. Yeah. So he wants that's, to stay in. He wants to yeah. stay in LA. So he said he'd take a pay cut, and I mean, he took a he tore his ACL. So I mean, there's not much more he can do. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking up the Rams free agents for for this season because i think odell is the only big one i think so too so 2022 los angeles rams free agents is uh wait oh that's just in general center um, von miller is one darius williams sony michelle Austin Corbett, Odell, Johnny Munt. Um, the rest, some of these guys I've never heard of. 
yeah, a lot of there's a couple there's a couple linemen, but Odell, uh, Sony Michelle, and Von Miller are the three biggest names. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then you start getting into Troy Reader. He was a I believe he was a starter. Darius Williams is a starter. So yeah, they have a couple starters in there, but overall, nothing that'll totally tear them down because I mean, you saw. Darius Williams isn't anything special. He's a decent piece to have across from Jalen Ramsey. Uh, so th- I don't really think that's too big of a loss. Troy Reader, he was their better linebackers because I don't, I know Von Miller's listed as a linebacker. I don't really count him as a linebacker. He's just a, pa- he's a pass rusher. Uh, so that's where I would put that, but Overall, they they still have most of their team for next season, which is big for them. But g- going back to the uh, the Bengals real quick in their future, I think as long as they keep the pieces that they had for the most part and draft heavily, heavily in the O line, yeah, their O line stinks. Yeah, then they and I potentially even say that you get so if you're righty. Uh, I'd say you want to probably sign a left tackle and then draft everyone else just because left tackle is such an important piece on the offensive line because that's Burrow's blind side. But uh, I would say left tackle would probably be the one you'd want to sign and then draft O-line heavily. Yeah, their O-line is – Take a note out of the book. Yeah, their their line is one of the worst I think we've ever seen in the Super Bowl. And if they were better, they would have won the game because on the last play of the game, Jamar, Jamar Chase, Chase beat Jalen. He beat Jalen Ramsey, and if he had like if Joe Burrow had two or three more seconds, it would have been an easy touchdown, and we would have been having a different conversation right now. Yeah. Uh. Did you you know the meme where it's like, uh, it was like. So they had two two different comparisons, and it was Joe Burrow, anyone at offensive line, Jamar Chase wide open, and the ball is going five yards. And then yeah, like, that literally Joe happened Burrow, last play. Penny Sewell, anyone twenty yards downfield, and the ball actually gets to him. That uh, that meme actually came true. Yeah, and um, Sam J P Ryan, he um, he left Washington, but the Washington can't leave you. He missed an easy first down on that third down, and then he didn't die for a ball that was at his feet. And just like Cam Newton in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, you. Why well, I don't understand why he didn't leave everything out there. You have to die for that, and you really have to do everything you can to get that first down. Understand, Aaron Donald had a hand on you, but you need to make that first down. And why wasn't Joe Mixon on the field for that play? Why wouldn't you yeah. just? I uh. <laughs> Dude, I leave everything out on the field when we play backyard football. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you playing should... for a Super Bowl right now. Yeah, we're, we're... <laughs> yeah. The last time we played pickup, I almost blew out my knee <laughs> going for a catch. Exactly, like that. That's the Super Bowl right there. Yeah. Uh, but I I think it was a good game overall, and but now here's the hardest part in the fact that there is now no football until august yeah eight or nine months which Um, is the hardest eight or nine months man your math is messed up a little there bud that's six months see i knew that i was testing you (laughs) you were testing me okay so it was was, reds no more commanders football for around that time which is probably more happy for you than yeah i'm I'm happy about that because they 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 give me stress speaking of uh Speaking of the commanders, let's move on, continue that series and talk about their defense from this season. You want to start off with, uh, well, let's start off because I just, in general, uh, Ron Rivera has probably been underperforming the past couple of seasons. So I'm just interested what, what's, what do you think is going on with, uh, Ron Rivera? Is he going to stay there? I think he's going to stay, um. I think I'm not that right, I'm thinking he's going to get fired yeah. this season, but I mean, what do you see for the future for him? Like if he fails this next season, is he going to get fired? Like what, that's what I mean. There. 
I don't know, but I think he has too much on his plate. I think we're really expecting too much of him. He has to come in and pretty much change an entire team's um, culture. And right now, it seems like we're a very toxic place in terms of like controversies and stuff like that. So I think we're asking too much of him. He's he isn't a GM. He's a coach. He should be focusing on football. He shouldn't be focusing on how this new name is going to change our change our perception or how the workplace is going to work. We just need him to focus on scheming, planning for teams, getting the best out of players, stuff like that. So I think we're putting a little bit too much on his plate, but I think he can still come good. I think we learned a lot from this season. I think we started off fundamentally wrong in our entire defense and our defense started to play at the end besides the secondary, which was a little shaky. Our defensive line was actually starting to play pretty good considering we only had one of our rushers. Well, two, actually we had no ed, none of our edge rushers. So I think there's potential there. I think the defense, the defense should be amazing because it was Ron disappointing Rivera, this season. It was Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio are both really good defensive minds. So that defense should be amazing. Disappointing this season is right on cue because that that team sh- the defense should be the best top five in the league every se- every season. Excuse yeah. me. So that's where that should be. Uh, yeah, this season, I think we worked out a lot of kinks and. We worked out a lot of things that needed that we really needed to learn. Um, I think we may have gotten a little too ahead of ourselves in the past two years. And I think this has brought us down to earth and made, I think everybody on the team realize we need to work really hard. So hopefully it's a blessing in disguise. So starting out with your D line, the D line. Okay. I don't think there's much more, much that needs to be said about the D line. I mean, obviously you have one of the best in football in the, uh, all first round picks in Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, uh, John Allen, and Chase John Allen. Allen. I wanted to say Josh Allen, but I knew that wasn't right. John yeah, Allen got him from the Bills right. and put him on the line. Yes. Uh, I mean, dude, he might be able to do it. That man's a beast. Uh, so, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's much that needs to be said about that. Uh, yeah. Are any of them up for free agency anytime soon? No, isn't, I don't think so. Isn't Montez sweat up this year? I don't think so. But if he is, I expect him to re-sign. Because I feel like Montez sweat took a little bit to uh to get into his get into his rhythm. Because I feel like you didn't hear much from him for a bit. Yeah. Uh, but obviously Chase Young is still not you don't have to worry about him he's coming off an injury but thankfully it's he it's he's young and he will be able to come back a lot quicker and hopefully he's able to um add things to his game and hopefully he'll come back better i I expect them to come back good even though we did start off pretty bad this season i think we really worked out some things and that fight between deron Payne and josh allen or John Allen, I think it was needed. I mean, they said they're like brothers, and you you have brothers, so you you know you fight with them. So I think that cleared the air. Yeah. Uh, so I think we can move on from the defensive line. Uh, what do you think about the depth, actually? Because that is a very important piece. Um, I w- well, considering how good we played down the stretch, I think our depth is actually pretty good. We've seen we drafted two rookie edge rushers, and they were actually playing pretty decent. And we have Matt Ioannidis coming back. So I think our depth, especially on the defensive line, is actually pretty good. And it should be able to maintain us. Uh, moving up to the linebackers, which proved that this team needs linebackers desperately. I would venture to say uh, almost as desperately, almost as the Eagles. Almost. Not yeah. quite as badly, but I would venture to say almost as bad. I feel like Jamin Davis was a little bit in over his head, but granted, he was drafted on that back end of the of the first round, and the first round about the 15 picks is where you're looking at the real first round talents who are ready to play in the NFL right now. And I After think that, we were starting to reach putting too much bit. for Jamin Davis. I think we're putting too much on him. I think like we kind of put that like Ray Lewis role on him quite early. It seems like that he would have to be 
the quarterback of the defense and really tied down the linebacking core. And I think no matter who you are, unless you're a Ray Lewis, any, any first year player is going to struggle in that. And considering our linebackers, Cole, guys like Cole Holcomb, they're good in run defense. They're very good. Um, but their pass protection, it leaves a lot to be desired. And I think Jamin Davis we want him to do too much. We want him to be that middle linebacker that really recognizes plays and shuts down any offense, but we also need him to sometimes spy a quarterback or a wide receiver if we're running low on um, secondary defenders. So, um, yeah, I do agree with you that we need to get better because we can't really put everything on such a young player so early. The uh, – I – I'll actually save that for the next little bit. But, yeah, the linebackers do need to be fixed there. The linebackers did not play well. Uh, going up a little bit to the corners, who who all is in – I know the corners were pretty good. Uh, who Who's in your corner core? William Jackson. Um, let me pull up the depth chart for a minute. I looked up commander's corners, and it brought up a – it, it brought up a bunch of old guys. Yeah, I, I think that's the uh, the wrong one I'm looking for. Yeah, we have William Jackson, Kendall Fuller, Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice, Danny Johnson, and a bunch of other guys. Um, They showed moments where they looked good, but I think they were overall pretty disappointing. There was moments where William Jackson looked like Josh Norman out there, just getting burnt. But – it's not completely their fault because in early the season, obviously our offensive line was not playing good at all. We had a very tough schedule, so that needs to be taken into account, but they need to play better straight up. Uh, you can't always rely on your defensive line to to bail you out every play. Um, and our safeties need to play better as well. Landon Collins, I think, has actually found his position where he's kind of like a um, – He's more of a roaming linebacker than he is his true safety because his legs, I think, are starting to really go. And he's no longer that really fast player that you can count on to keep up with wide receivers. So he was starting to play very, very well as that as a linebacker role. But Cam Curl needs to play better. Jimmy Reeves does. Bobby McCain, he had moments where he looked good, but overall he needs to, be, he needs to play better as well. So, um, But I think – like the whole defense, I think it starts with offensive line or defensive line. Overall, like, it's a decent defense. Yeah, it Just should be of, top five, but yeah. I think when one thing went wrong, it all started to crumble. Yeah. But I think we did start to see them play better towards the end, not necessarily our last few games because we're playing like crap then, but yeah. I just think we need to gain our confidence back and kind of come back down to earth. Uh, so I saw a mock draft from this just says the Eagles, uh, this just says the latest Eagles mock draft. I can't see who it's from. I'm trying to, uh, trying to find it. So yeah, I can't quote who it's from, but I'm just looking at some of the, uh, some of the like big names that are going, they're saying Kyle Hamilton top safety in the draft going number five to the giants which i want to see if the eagles can i want to see them try to trade up to get kyle hamilton i know it won't happen because philadelphia doesn't like to draft uh safeties in the first round but it's a little bit of a hope or it could be hopeful they um they have matt corral going to the falcons at number eight uh for the commanders at number 11 ahmad gardner cornerback out of cincinnati I don't be too mad about this. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at an NFL one right now. And they have Matt Coral going to us at 11, which I think is the absolute wrong decision. I don't think any of the quarterbacks in this class are first, are first round material. I mean, people are probably going to because they're reaching, but I really don't think we should draft a quarterback. Um, I know people are going to say we want a young guy and all that, yada, 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 but there's more talented players available. We need the we need to go linebacker, secondary, or maybe just one more offensive piece or maybe another running back or a wide receiver. I just think there's better players at other positions we need to fill. 
and I also saw one, th like I looked at Montez Sweat to try and see if he's a free agent, and it seems like he could be a valuable trade piece in a few mock drafts for maybe a big quarterback. So, I mean, I wonder how that would work out and if it would be worth it, but that could be something to think about. Uh, in this mock draft, they have – the Eagles trading out of the number 15 spot it doesn't say what the trade would be. It just says uh, they have them trading out of the spot and the Chargers taking it. The Eagles drafting at 16, which is the Colts pick, getting Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah, which if they do draft a linebacker in the first round, I'll be happy. I just yeah. want in every down back, which is what they say, they say – uh. This is an every down player who shows very few weaknesses, which is what you want to see. Only thing is Utah, I believe that's a Pac-12 team, and which is not the greatest competition. Uh, Utah, I believe, did have a pretty decent season, though, but I just want an every down back who can, like, cover the length of the field. Obviously not one to, like, Anthony Barr or Eric Kendrick's stature because that is that's some high-quality linebacker linebacker play to get to but just an every down back who's a decent player i'd like number this seven mock, this mock draft i'm looking at at 16 they have you guys taking edge rusher out of purdue george Karolaftis. Or oh, this, Karolaftis. this one has a this one has that guy going third damn to the texans this is a really good draft for edge rushers uh yeah at the 17 pick which they got from which they would have gotten from the chargers in that draft uh, o lineman out of Iowa, Tyler Linderbaum, which I mean, any big man out of Iowa is probably a good pick. Iowa is one yeah. of those states or one of those colleges that just produces O lineman so well. And then with their last pick at number 19, their own pick would be Jahan Dotson, which if they were to do that, I think just because I am a Penn State fan and I watched him. I know that he has he has the ability to catch the ball. Whether that'll translate to the NFL and actually work out, I hope it would. But I feel like he'd be a good piece to have across from Devontae Smith, where Devontae Smith is more of that playmaker, and then Jahan Dotson to have a just have as a security blanket, which I would like, especially if because Jalen Rager's future in Philadelphia looks very, very short. So in my opinion, he shouldn't even come back. I don't know if they're going to do that. But I think uh, if they do get him, I would be okay with that, especially if they don't sign one in free agency. That's obviously going to depend on free agency, which I believe starts starts in just a couple weeks, actually. I don't know when. Uh, I know it's in March. I want to say March 14th. The negotiate The negotiation period starts three days prior uh what date does nfl free agency marks march 16th so the negotiation period starts on the 13th but overall i'd be okay with that i'd like to see three defensive picks but i know the odds yes. of that happening are very slim being that this is a offensive ridden league now yeah, this mock draft has you guys picking Sauce Gardner at 18 and Tyler Lundbaum at 19. What a name. Sauce Gardner. It, wait, what position does he play? Does he play corner? Yeah, he's a corner. That's what I thought. Out of where? Cincinnati. He's a junior. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, the, the quarterback, you guys should definitely wait to draft a quarterback until next season. Or if there's one available in late second or third, but – we should not, I repeat, not go for one oh, in the wait. first round. I wanted to see if they uh they put if they have what's his name? Uh who's the guy out of pit? Oh, I know the guy you're talking about, don't remember his I name. I can't think of his name. Kenny Pickett. Yeah, that guy. They don't they don't even have Kenny Pickett getting drafted in the first round. Neither does this one. Which I would should. say, I would say if you guys could get Kenny Pickett in the first third round, that or not third, second round, that's more realistic. Yes. Yeah. This mock draft has Malik Willis going third. 
This one has Malik Willis going last to the uh, Lions. This one has another quarterback going last. Um, Desmond Ryder Who's, going 32. Where's he out of? Cincinnati. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and speaking of quarterbacks, did you hear the rumor that the Colts could possibly be looking to trade away or release yeah. Carson Wentz? I did see that. This this one has a six six edge rushers in the first round. Like that's how good this edge rush draft is going to be. Which I would be okay with the Eagles getting an edge rusher here because I doubt you need I one. Highly doubt. Which we'll talk about more in the next episode that Derek that Derek Barnett's coming back. If you think about it, I mean, looking back at the Super Bowl year the Eagles lineup at the end was just, just menacing because they had Brandon Graham and Chris Long starting and then subbing in and out. They had Derek Barnett. Uh, I believe Josh Sweat was on that team. I don't know if he was, uh, I don't know if he was playing much, but they had Chris Long, Brandon Graham, Derek Barnett in there. Josh Sweat was in there, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, they had really good rotation going. Let's see. Uh, but, oh, no, he wasn't. He was drafted in 2018. So, that is a lie. I apologize about that. But I think that is all we have in the NFL. Next week, we'll talk about the – uh. We'll talk about the Eagles defense. I'm trying to pull up the Eagles because I just want to see who their edge rushers were in that year. Edge rushers, defense, defense, defense. What is going on? Oh, I can't just... I can't do that. All right. So they were players. It doesn't matter. Huh? They were random players. It doesn't matter. Now, because I'm just trying to see who the uh who the edge rushers were. Because like the Eagles have always uh counted on their counted on their defensive line. Oh, Vinnie Curry, that's the other one I was thinking of that I couldn't think of. Uh but yeah, Vinnie Curry. Brandon Graham, Chris Long, and Derek Barnett was their four rotation at edge rush. So they they do like to uh they do like to look at the edge. But I believe that's all I got for football. I want to move on to the NHL. Yeah. So I think we'll start with the uh hot topic here, just a little bit more news. Um there was a reporter out of Colorado who He's a, usually a pretty reliable reporter from what I've heard. I don't uh, watch him, but there was a report heard that if Giroux were to be traded, he said he'd be okay with being traded to Colorado, uh, which for the Flyers, that would be more of a asset kind of trade more than a draft pick trade because I don't think they have a first rounder this year. They which don't. They're going to get a first rounder for Giroux, no doubt. Uh, so that'd be more of an asset ridden trade and then maybe a first round talent versus a draft pick. Yeah. Uh, and then St. Louis and Minnesota were the other two that were heard to, for him to be okay going to, which is yeah. all good because that's the Western conference away from the flyers. And Calgary's now out of it. Cause they just traded for Tyler to and they're really on a hot run. Jacob Markstrom was playing very well, which he um, has all season. I mean, he started out yeah. in 10 games, had three shutouts. Yeah, so it looks like they may have the team to make a deep run. I don't know if it could result in a cup win, but they certainly look like they could be a very good team. And I, the Tyler Toffoli kind of sets the trade market. They they got quite a bit, but Tyler Toffoli, he still has some term left. He has two years after this one, so he's still got some term left, and he's only 29. But that's that's the set of the trade market right there, and I be, it's kind of a high one. They traded uh, 
a first rounder, a but the first rounder is top 10 protected. So what that means, I think uh, you can double check for me, but or correct me if I'm wrong, but top 10 protected uh, means that if Calgary were to somehow just drop completely from where they are and end up in a top 10 pick, then the first rounder would be moved to the next season. No, I think that just means they would get the pick back. So here, the top 10 protected. This is an example. So if the Maple Leafs would keep it if it falls in the top 10 next year instead of giving the Hurricanes the first round pick. Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, they would just keep it, which is weird. I think it, happen, it happens. It happens a lot in basketball, and it happens a lot more in basketball. Wow, that is that is actually I've never heard of that because like I've heard of you know like in the they have conditional picks where if something hap they they trade for someone if someone if that player does something then they're like oh yeah then we'll give you a first round pick for it. But yeah, I've, but normally I've never heard of that. they normally also have, picks are unprotected though in terms of like, they also have lottery football. protected where it's yeah. Like, uh, if a first round pick ends up being a lottery pick, the team that traded that pick can keep that pick. So yeah, the that's what makes like the draft in the NHL and like just a little bit more confusing because they have so much more going on. And you have players coming from college, and then the yeah, I mean, some of these these kids, I mean, these kids are like sixteen when they're getting drafted. I was listening to this podcast the other day, and he's like. Most of these kids aren't even shaving when they get drafted into the NHL. Most of them have just gotten their license. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Dude. Oh, wow. That puts it in perspective. Wow. That makes me feel Some of them weird. maybe don't even have them or, or close to getting it when they get drafted. That is weird. Uh, so, but, yeah. So as long as Giroux is going out to the West, I'll be happy with that. Uh, but I did see Chuck Fletcher started talking to Claude Giroux, and Claude Giroux said right now he just wants to focus on the Flyers and how to get them out of this rut. He wants to win some hockey games and finish it up there. Well, hopefully you don't win tonight. Uh, did you? What, what did you want to say? I know you said you wanted to say something about the Caps. Yeah, um, we've had um, some rough games. I mean, we won a previous game against the Predators 4-1. to one. OV scored on the power play, so um, and the um, classic one-timer. But I, I still would like to see the power play get better because just besides that one goal, it's been playing pretty bad. Um, I think we're coming predictable, and it seems like we're just not doing enough. And, yes, I understand Oshie and Mantha are gone, but we still – it should be playing better, and we need a goal – like I said, we need a goaltender. Um, uh, I don't I know just, what that is, but we need I just a saw something today. What about uh, Marc-Andre Fleury? Yeah, I've heard that. I don't know if we'd be able to swing that, but it. I think – I would like to, but it – I'm not sure it'll happen due to Flurry may not want to come, and I don't know what it what it would take to get him. I think we'd probably have to trade either Sammy or Vanacek, which I'm good with. But yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, other than that, I mean, the Flyers are still struggling to play, and something that uh, so this was, I was listening to this podcast, and he said he brought up this. Uh, prompt for his people to like DM him about and the prompt was what is wrong with the Flyers uh, and so the, this is this is what I sent something into him uh, and this is what I said I said what's oh actually I'll read it word for word actually and so I don't get it wrong because I think what I said was kind of pretty much the best I could describe what I think is wrong with the Flyers. Uh, messages. So here's what I said. I said, this is something that all NHL teams deal with, but it all hit at once for the Flyers, and that's injuries and COVID. 
First off, the potential starting centers in Couturier, Morgan Frost, Derek Broussard, Kevin Hayes, and Thompson, uh, Nate Thompson, have played a total out of all five of those players. They've played a total of 115 games out of possible 240 games. That's less than half the games of the season with our starting centers healthy. So for more than half of the season, we haven't had, a, like we've had at least one starting center missing. And even if you take Morgan Frost out because he was like, he still hasn't learned the way of the NHL yet. And they're still kind of just work him in a bit. He that's still only 88 out of 192 possible games, which is only 46% of the games where they had, uh, if they were all playing at the same night where they had all the centers. So that means the forwards have been jumbled around quite a bit this season. I, um, he always says how a player shouldn't kill a single player missing shouldn't kill the team. Like when Mass Niskanen left, how it shouldn't have totally tore down the Flyers. And I said, I agree that one player shouldn't kill the team, but let's be real. Ryan Ellis, who is supposed to be the biggest factor this season, is the reason the defense has had issues. Ivan Provorov is not a headman, a Victor Hedman caliber player, and he needs a good player across from him. I don't think it, and I don't think the Flyers have another top pairing D man on the team right now not one that has potential to. And then just to close all that and wrap it all in a bow, when they were on that 13 game losing streak with all the injuries and everything, COVID hit just in time for all of that to be an issue. So that's like the, I think the Flyers have been hit with the injury bug about the worst any team possibly can in any league. Cause I mean, like even the depth is getting hurt. Like when I said Morgan Frost, like he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be the replacement, the next Claude Giroux, obviously probably not going to play to his standards, but I mean, he's supposed to be the next Claude Giroux, that playmaking center. And he even got hurt. Like, so they're bringing up as people from, uh, people from the AHL consistently just to try to feel a team, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, um, for me, I think it boils down to that. And I just think you, don't really have the weapons like I think you're really lacking in goal scoring besides Cam Atkinson who's the only real player you can say is a true goal scorer yeah. I don't think you have enough goal scoring you have that's, a lot of you have playmakers but I just don't think you have that's actually something I touched on too I said I think uh, you don't like, have any goal scorers besides, I said for I said for a rebuild because they were talking about rebuild I was saying for the rebuild like uh I don't think they need to tear it all apart if you look back at the 2019-2020 season, can you name one superstar that they had, aside from Claude Giroux? Aside from Claude Giroux and Travis Konechny, who was the all-star that went that season. Like, And I don't even think Claude Giroux was having an amazing season that season. But in the 19-20 season, there was no Crosby, McDavid, Kucherov-type player on the team. The It's... It was a team of good depth with all slightly above average players that cemented well and made a good team and had good chemistry. And it was cap friendly for the most part. And I think that's like the team that they need to go back to. It's that's, I think the team that they have right now, they have good players who all work well together when healthy, um, who don't kill the cap. Yeah, when healthy is the key word there because, like I said, yeah, that, Ryan, that's Ellis the big, played, that's the big Ryan Ellis has played four games this season. So they work, they mesh well when they're when they play together, but uh, and it's cap friendly for the most part. But there's like they don't have that superstar, but I don't think they need that superstar. Like that's you don't need it to make it in the playoffs, but if you want to be a serious contender, I think you do need a better goal score like I don't think you exactly need a play like a playmaker I think you need more of a goal score because you can't rely on Cam Atkinson to be your goal scorer he's 32 I mean I don't even know if he'll still be on the team at the trade deadline I haven't heard many there's a very leaving but yeah there's a very good chance he won't be because he's 32 he's he's having a decent season this year 17 goals 20 assists so 37 points in 48 games that's not bad enough you could probably get a high draft pick. I don't know if you could get a first out of him, but maybe he probably get a, a second. Possible. He's still yeah, having I a good season. Get a second, but yeah, I just can't see him being on the team anymore. And considering, let me look up his cap hit, but I don't think it's exactly very friendly to you guys. I think it's six mil. I think he's making six. Yeah, but that that's not definitely very no good. more than eight. 
Yeah. Um, it's 5.8 and yes, I just and, like that. I don't think that's very good for your oh, team. Oh, and then right next now. season he drops down to four something, I believe. Yeah. And so he's going to be a very attractive asset to a team that feels like they're just maybe like some depth. They need some more depth scoring away. So, yeah, yeah I think he, there's a very good chance he could be gone. But I, yeah, I just think you need more goal scores. But if you're not going to get them, you need more like 20 goal scores. Just like add a few more of in there and your team needs to stay healthy. That's I mean, it's hard to say if they mesh together because we really haven't seen them mess really play together. So, I mean, but I don't at the think beginning we've of the season, seen, yeah, I don't think we've seen – have we seen Risto and Ryan Ellis play in the same game? Uh, Not really. There was one game where Ryan Ellis was playing on the third line, and that's about it. There, like, that wasn't – so I still wouldn't count that. They, they haven't had a single game, not one this season – where everyone was healthy and in their proper spot. Because yeah, and so it's I'm, hard like, to say if the defense is the problem because if it like we don't know how they work together. They could yeah. be great, they could be at horrible. The, so at you the beginning don't know. of the season, Ryan Ellis and Provorov through like the first three, two, three games were playing together and they were playing well. And it made the team look quicker because Ryan Ellis is really good with the stretch passes, sending them forwards up and making them be able to make plays uh quickly. And so he made the team look quicker, but then he got hurt. And when he got hurt uh, at the beginning of the season, Risto was hurt going into the season. And then once he got healthy, Ryan Ellis got hurt. So yeah, they still haven't seen all everyone play together in the proper places. Yeah. So it's really difficult to pinpoint what exactly is wrong with the team. Um, I think it's easier to look at the offense a little bit more because a lot more of your offensive players have been around than except, your defense for the has. Yeah, except for centers but your centers i think like they're they're decent you have decent depth there but yeah I just, and i think your prospects really need to step up they need to start playing better they need more nhl time and i think like at when the trade deadline heads up i just think you need to call a bunch of them up uh just to close out this episode here uh oh, quickly over- the caps are oh. up are up one nothing against the Flyers at the end of the first. We're recording it, recording this on a Thursday, and that game's going on right now. So that's why we're not really talking about it that much. Uh, the going over to the MLB. Uh, the so I'll let you explain it because I feel like you understand it a little bit better than I do. Because when you sent it to me, I just didn't understand it. I just know like there was employee selling. What was it? It was an employee selling drugs like cocaine to players, including Tyler Skaggs, who passed away. Matt Harvey was on that short list, if you remember him from the Met Cy Young, when he was unhittable that year. But yeah, he was one of those players. But yeah, he was selling drugs to the team directly. And it's not like he was selling steroids. They were hardcore drugs. So um, three players received it and the suppliers is going to trial and it looks like he's going to get a minimum of 20 years because it ultimately resulted in a player's death. Yeah. It, I, you sent that to uh you sent that, or no, I just saw it today that uh the, the guy who sent it is spending no less than 20 years in prison. Yeah. So that's, I mean, serves him right. He's the one who uh is the one who gave him the drugs. So, I mean, that's kind of, what you suffer from yeah just thankfully justice has been served and it's 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 a horrible situation for for a young pitcher to pass away when he had so much going for him and then for the team that he's playing for is take took advantage of him uh did you also want to talk about the cba meeting yes so the players associate association in the league met today and it lasted a whole 15 minutes so i think there's a very good possibility that the lockout could stretch into the season if because it seems like no progress is being made the last meeting didn't go well either so I, it's They'd be this is crazy ready. and considering this would have been a very crazy free agent year because you have guys like freddie freeman who are free agents so it it's just that would have been interesting, but 
I, I would like to see them reach an agreement because I want to talk about baseball more. I mean, pitchers and catchers were supposed to report yesterday, I believe. So, yeah, I was going to say they sh- they would be getting ready for uh for the spring training. Some of the yes, free agents will be starting in a few 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 weeks. Some of the top free agents: Carlos Correa, F- Freddie Freeman, Chris Bryant, Trevor Story, Nick Castellanos, Clayton Kershaw. Uh. Michael Conforto, Kyle Schwarber, yeah, uh, Anthony Rizzo, Kyle Seeger, not Corey Seeger, yeah, uh, Kyle. Corey Seeger, he he signed the deal with the Rangers before the lockout happened. Oh, okay. Nelson Cruz, that's another big name. Uh, Jorge Soler, who, if you remember, blasted that ball to the moon in the World Series. Great trade for them to pick up Solaire. Wow, Zach Grinky. Well, he's old. Yeah, he's 38. Uh, I didn't even realize that he was that old. Jacques Peterson. And that looks like that's about it. Yeah, and I'm um, getting... speaking on free agency a little bit. Um, it just came out that Juan Soto had turned out before the lockout a 13 year, $350 million deal for the Nats. And According to his agent, it looks like they're going to wait until free agency, which will happen in 2024. Hopefully that's just a ploy to to scare the Nationals into giving them a bigger deal. And after the um, Players Association and League comes to a new bargaining agreement, maybe that means he'll get more money. But if we don't re-sign Juan Soto, they're going to lose a lot of this fans um, fan base because Ryan Zimmerman just retired, which Mr. National going to have his number retired by the team, but losing Juan Soto is something we cannot afford to have happen. We cannot say goodbye to another good outfielder in the span of five years. And he's already run his wing ring off. I think he's, he wants probably half a billion, which I think he deserves Give him it. Don't be cheap. Do not cheap Hold out. Hold on. He's- Hold on. Wait. So you're telling me that he deserves more money than Mike Trout? Well, yeah. But, well, it's not that like he deserves it, but Tristan, the amount of revenue is going up. I yes, I'm aware of that, but still, you're saying that he deserves more money than Mike Trout. Well, he's 23, so yeah. All I'm saying is, uh, athletes sometimes are asking for quite a bit of money they're asking for quite a bit of money but it's worth it um did you know that um he has the most walks at 23 ever in the league he has more than mickey mantle and more than mike trout more than a bunch of good players he most walks before the age of 23 he has and we don't see that a lot from hitters nowadays we see a lot of hitters like go for the strikeout or the homer yeah, I th- like I don't think our team can really afford to lose him in terms of just revenue wise. Oh, you're just saying in general. I thought you were saying like he has the most amount of walks in MLB history. But you're no, just saying at the age you- of tw- yeah, oh, okay. at the age of 23, he has the most. Because I was like, how does he have the most amount? Yeah, no, Barry Bonds has uh, so many more walks. That dude was the Greek god of walks. <laughs> uh. Why does it not give me his walks? I'm now interested in how many walks he has. Barry Bonds? Or no, so. now Barry Bonds is over 2,000. Uh, standard I think batting. he has around 300. I can't find it. Oh, here we go. He has 373. Yeah. And, he only, and to put it in that in perspective, he he has 352 strikeouts. You rarely see a player have more walks than they do strikeouts, especially when you're as good of a hitter. Especially when you're a power hitter. Yeah. And he's not just like a purely power hitter. Like you see somebody like Joey Gallo, where they're trying to tear the ball off the cover every every single at bat. But he, I think he he's really like a Ted Williams or a Barry Bonds, where they have amazing eyes. They're all like all around great hitters uh is that all you got for baseball yeah i think that's all we can really talk about actually i did want to uh wrap around and finish off with one more thing that i forgot to mention when we were talking about football earlier 
So you heard about the USFL, right? Mm -hmm. And how it's making a return. So uh, what do you think about now? This is just an idea that I've heard talks about, but I think would be a really cool idea. What do you think about taking maybe the USFL and the XFL and using those as uh, using, well, maybe at least one of them. So maybe one you have for spring football and then using the other one for, uh, for developmental purposes, like AAA and AA in, in the MLB and the AHL in, the, in hockey. I think, I think that, I think that could be, a, that could be a really good idea. Like, because like, then you getting... see, because then players like Jalen Rager and Jamin Davis, who maybe aren't quite ready to take that step and get that big of a role that mm-hmm. quickly, could like develop a little bit. And I think you would see a lot more like undrafted diamonds in the rough. You really yeah. would like you would see more. Um, there's. And I mean, a guy... you saw you saw a couple players get signed from the XFL, like a uh, PJ Walker for the. Yeah, Carolina like, Panthers. I think that could be a really good idea. I don't know how that would work out. I think the NFL would have to talk there, to. The there was Rock already talks about the XFL. the XFL doing that. Yeah, I think that could be when a Dwayne, really good idea. That would be a lot Johnson's better than. It'd be a lot better than practice squad experience because that that doesn't prepare you. Nothing prepares yeah, it's you. It's not for game experience. Game, like an actual game, there's nothing you could supplement to get that experience. Yeah, uh, I just think that'd be a great idea, and like. The I know this is not a common sport, but in lacrosse, they have the PLL and the NLL. The NLL is the National Lacrosse League, and the NLL is indoor winter lacrosse, so they have two leagues to play. So after the PLL season, they go in, a lot of them go and they play in the NLL. So they're still playing the sport and just getting better because they're because a lot of them do it like so there's a lot of players from the same leagues shifting leagues and playing against each other. So, I mean, they're still learning and everything. Yeah. Um, one thing I watched international soccer, one thing that they do as well, that it's the, the games are set up different, but one thing they do, they have the youth academies, but they also can send players out on loan to other, other teams. And there's a lot more leagues. So, yeah. So I think it'd be a good idea to have like a, um, a feeder league for the NFL I think that really would be a good idea. I think you'd see more undrafted free agents make it because I think there's a lot more than we realize because I think there's like players who are gamers, like players who maybe don't look that great on like your normal combine sheet, but when they get on the field, they, they just, they play a lot better. You know who, this was the NHL, but you know who was an undrafted free agent in the NHL turned out to be great. Who? Wayne Gretzky. He was undrafted? Yeah, Wayne Gretzky went undrafted. Huh. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it either until I was listening to uh, one of the Bar Down podcasts. Oh, and, um, and, uh, I was thinking about an undrafted wide receiver earlier. Wayne Corbett, he was a very good wide receiver for the Jets teams in the early 2000s that were actually pretty decent. So, yeah, I think you could pot if you would have that feeder league, you'd be able to find the way more Wayne Corbett's. Uh, but yeah. Yep. Despite his somewhat vague situation, Wayne Gretzky was in fact never drafted into the NHL. Mm. But uh, yeah, that Maybe is. Because all- he couldn't raise the puck off the ice. <laughs> Turned out to not matter. <laughs> but with that, that is all I got. Uh, all I got. That's all you have. All right. So that's going to finish it off this week. Uh, you guys can you guys can subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel at BL in the DC where we have the videos put up. Uh, you can rate and review our podcast on Apple and Spotify. You can... Follow us on Instagram at BL in the DC, where you can DM us questions and comments. You can email us questions and comments at BL in the DC at gmail.com. And with that, that's what we are going to close out with, and we'll see you guys next week. See you later.